Season 4, Episode 3, titled Castle Mania. Nice. This episode starts with Rainbow Dash and Applejack doing their whole sporty spice, power dyke, sexual tension thing. This cartoon's only big enough for one tomboyishly athletic character. Why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? It's leave, Biff. Make like a tree and leave. It's a little thing, but I really like whenever they acknowledge each of the main six having different dynamics and relationships with each of the others, just like any group of friends in real life. When Applejack and Rainbow Dash hang out, they encourage each other's competitive streaks, and their friendly rivalry forms the basis of their chemistry. Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie get along because they have a similar sense of humor, whereas Twilight and Applejack both tend to be a little annoyed by Pinkie's outlandishness, just as Rarity and Applejack butt heads over their very different personalities and values, while Rarity and Fluttershy, being the two most overtly feminine characters, are often seen together and seem to bond over their mutual femininity. Rainbow Dash also seems to have a close bond with Fluttershy, despite being complete opposites in personality, and she seems both consistently frustrated with Fluttershy's meekness while also being very protective of her and pushing her to excel. These are all very realistic and relatable types of chemistry that friends tend to form with each other, with the exception being Pinky, whose wild card optimism makes her love everybody equally, and Twilight, who everyone has to love the most because she's the main character and a princess now. So why am I pointing this out? You might be thinking, well, duh, of course they interact with each other differently. Everyone knows the characters in this show are good, that's like brony propaganda 101. I know that after three years of watching this show, all this stuff is obvious, but I still enjoy seeing it explored, because I believe good stories tend to come from good characters and not the other way around. The main characters and their interactions with each other should always take center stage. I could watch a show with no plot whatsoever as long as the characters play off each other well. The ensemble episodes are fine, but I'm especially fond of the ones that focus on exploring the relationship between two characters. Examples being Look Before You Sleep, Green Is Not Your Color, Hurricane Fluttershy, because those are the ones that have the most room to explore the nature of friendship, which is important because it's kind of the theme of the entire show. It's, it's in the title. And even more to the point, it was also a big part of the moral of Season 4's premiere. Remember Applejack's whole spiel about how the elements might have brought us together, but our friendships with one another have blossomed into something genuine that doesn't need the elements to stay in each other's lives. Hot dog. If the writers are really on their A-game here, they would make that idea be the running theme of the whole season, and have this season contain more episodes focusing on different pairs. I think the show could only benefit from more episodes like that. Pinky would certainly benefit from it, because she's the most underdeveloped in that regard. Aside from pranking with Rainbow Dash, I can't really think of a close bond she has with any of the other main characters. She just kind of, by default, loves everyone. Will pairing up different combinations of ponies be a running theme this season? Well, we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? But this episode certainly seemed to go in that direction. Everybody was paired up. So the plot of the episode is that they're all spending the night in this spooky old castle. But instead of just having them all gather around on some assignment from Celestia, the writers actually went all the way with the horror movie theme, and just like a typical horror movie, the characters all just so happen to converge in the setting for different reasons. Think The Haunting, or The House on Haunted Hill. In those kinds of movies, the characters usually don't know each other beforehand, so the haunted house, and their fear of it, becomes their common bond, and it creates character dynamics and a sense of tension unique to the genre. Obviously, the main six all know each other, but by keeping them in separate pairs, oblivious to each other's presence, you sort of get that same kind of tension here. All three pairs think they're alone, and they're more vulnerable because of it. Not to mention those great one-on-one -on -one character moments I love so much. It would have been easy to just drop all of the ponies off at the castle together, but instead, they chose a theme for the episode and ran with it all the way. So why are they all in this creepy, dangerous castle? Well, Spike and Twilight are there on an assignment from Celestia, Rarity and Fluttershy came in search of old royal fabrics, because apparently Rarity's insane, and Applejack and Rainbow Dash came there on a dare. See how all these motivations for coming to the castle are perfectly in line with the specific bonds and habits the two characters are known to have between them? You've got Twilight and Spike's student-assistant relationship on display, these two are here on some girly crafting escapade, and these two are here to stubbornly compete for bragging rights. It all fits with what we know about the characters and how they interact with each other. So now they're all spending the night in this creepy castle, and strange things are a hoof. Get it, I said a hoof instead of a foot! <laughs> Someone, or something, is causing all kinds of otherworldly calamity and playing a creepy organ. I'm sure anyone out there with a functioning brain had the same reaction I did. The Pony of Shadows! It's Pinkie Pie. <laughs> it's Pinkie Pie. Have you all spent the whole night running around scaring each other? Well, that depends. On what? 
on whether or not you're the Pony of Shadows. It's Pinkie Pie! Oh my god, it's Pinkie Pie. That's amazing. Wow, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, predictable as it may be, Pinkie Pie took a backseat in this episode to be the reveal at the end, which is probably for the best, considering how badly the character tends to be written in episodes dealing with the entire cast. Did you know I can totally play the organ? Because I didn't! <sighs> I have a lot I could say about the ongoing flanderization of Pinkie's character. And I will. That video's coming. Suffice to say, she seems to have devolved from comic relief to village idiot, and it's fucking annoying. But for now, let's gloss over it, because we don't got all day and I don't want to get off track. This episode was pretty good, all things considered. But let's consider those things. Here are some minor complaints and grievances I had about this episode. At the beginning of the episode, Rainbow Dash and Applejack are covered in bees as part of their dare to see who's the most daring. But when the bees fly away, they're both wearing protective bee suits. How is that daring? If I had a bee suit, I would let bees crawl on me all day. I like bees. If you didn't have to worry about being stung, why wouldn't you cover yourself in bees? I'd walk through Detroit like that, just daring someone to try and rob me. Oh, what's that? You want my wallet? Well, sure, all you gotta do is get past the bees, motherfucker! Yeah! Applejack's tail looks fucking gross in that beekeeper suit. It makes it look like some kind of hideous mutant extra arm coming out of her butt. Zero out of ten. Would not come inside. The moral at the end was that it's important to learn from the past, which is true. It's a little vague, but not every episode needs a perfectly neat and tidy moral, and it's to be taken more as a setup for yet another status quo shift this season. Since there's not really much reason to be sending friendship reports to Celestia anymore, how does the show continue to have morals at the end? Like this. Why don't we keep a journal, just like the Royal Pony Sisters? Not a drastic change by any means, but it's moving the arc forward and certainly makes more sense than continuing to make friendship reports. That would be like studying for a course you already passed. I always let my imagination run away from me, then it comes back with cake! <laughs> Shut up! So this episode had its flaws, but it was still pretty enjoyable, and I still think Season 4 is shaping up real nice. I'm not one of those guys who really likes to criticize Season 3. It had some good episodes, but I think the problem was that a lot of us, myself included, had just sort of become jaded and tired of the whole thing by then. Season 3 had to contend with the show being around long enough to no longer be a novelty, so we were all naturally becoming more critical of it, as well as more annoyed and disgusted with the fandom in general, and more aware of what dark things lied in store for us from the repulsive decadence of Hasbro. I think these factors combined just sort of drove us all into a negative mindset and there was sort of a dark cloud hanging over the entire season. But watching season 4, my interest in the show feels very much rejuvenated. Maybe I just had to get sick of the whole thing so that I could rediscover what I liked about it so much in the first place. Or maybe I just like this! Shoes.